Research shows that air pollution brings down the life expectancy of Indians by 9 years. It also shows that it causes asthma, allergies and obesity in children. While we can wait for the macroeconomic policies to change to make sure that we are able to breathe in pure air, there are little things that we can do to keep ourselves safe and bringing an air purifier home is one of them. In this video, I will cover how you can select an air purifier. I will showcase these parameters using the Dyson air purifier. Let's start with the most important aspect of an air purifier, which is the filtration system itself. The first thing that you need to consider in the filtration system is what is the type of HEPA filters that are being used. HEPA comes in many, many different variants. You might have vendors calling it out as true HEPA, H10, H11, H12, H13, H14 and sometimes HEPA-like filters. Now you need to make sure that you pick up at least a true HEPA filter or an H13 or H14 HEPA filter because that is what does the maximum amount of filtration. The Dyson Hot Plus Cool Air Purifier has an H13 HEPA filter. It can capture dust particles up to 0.1 microns with great efficiency. How small is 0.1 microns you might ask? A strand of hair is 70 microns. A dust particle can be less than 10 microns. Bacteria is 1 to 3 microns. Smoke is 0.4 to 0.7 microns. And coronavirus is less than 0.1 microns. So no, an air purifier does not capture the coronavirus. In addition to the HEPA filter, the other thing you need to consider is the efficiency of the air purifier itself. So if an air purifier says that they can capture particles up to 0.1 microns, the efficiency shows that how efficiently it can capture particles up to 0.1 microns. So typically efficiency should range between 99 to 99.97% the higher the better. The Dyson air purifier has an efficiency of 99.95% which is great at capturing ultra fine particles like allergens and pollutants. The other important aspect of filtration is the ability to remove odors and volatile organic compounds. So a HEPA filter is not good enough for this. You need an activated carbon filter in addition to a HEPA filter. So the Dyson has an activated carbon filter which can be useful in removing odors, smoke smells, paint smells and so on. And the last aspect of the filtration system is having a pre-filter. Now having a pre-filter helps to actually capture bigger particles before it reaches the HEPA filter so that the life of the HEPA filter can be increased. The Dyson does not have a pre-filter but you can vacuum the HEPA filters on a regular basis to make sure that you are able to take out the bigger particles from the HEPA filter itself. So because the Dyson has both the HEPA as well as the carbon filters, it helps to sense, detect and purify four different types of pollutants. One is the PM2.5, the PM10, the VOCs as well as the NO2s. It can report the stats of these pollutants in real time as well both on the app as well as on the machine itself. It is also one of the few air purifiers that is certified for asthma and allergies by the Allergy Standards Limited. It is very important to make sure that the filtration system is at its best performance and therefore you need to change the filtration system on a regular basis. Most manufacturers will say that you need to replace the filters at least once a year, sometimes higher. Higher the better because the cost will actually come down. In the case of Dyson, both the machine as well as the app will tell you when the filters are due for replacement. So in general, it will last for about 1600 hours and the filters replacement costs about rupees 5000. Now that we've covered the filtration system, let's cover some of the usability aspects of it. The first aspect is how large a room size can the air purifier cover? So in the case of the Dyson, it can cover significantly large sizes of 600 plus square feet. Compared to most of the others that I had reviewed in my earlier video, this covers a larger room size. And because it has this kind of an oscillation, it can direct the purified air in different parts of the room as well, unlike some of the others which do not have an oscillation. The second usability aspect is the flavor of the season for all home appliances these days. Having a smart app using which you can actually control the appliance. The Dyson also has a Dyson Link app which you can use to control your air purifier. You can turn on your air purifier, use all the controls that you can do 
using a remote, turning on heating, cooling, changing the oscillation, selecting the direction of airflow, setting a timer after which you want the air purifier to turn off, turning on the night mode, checking real time stats, scheduling your air purifier to turn on at a particular time of day. This is particularly useful if you would like the air purifier to be turned on few hours before you go to bed. So in addition to the smart app, in case you don't even want to lift a finger, there is also an integration with Alexa. So you can just ask Alexa to turn the air purifier on or off. So we already spoke about filtration and usability. Let's talk about some of the convenience aspects. If you live in an area which can get fairly cold, or if you're like me who feels cold at even 15 to 20 degrees centigrade, then this particular model also has an inbuilt heater in it. If you don't need an heater, there are other models that Dyson has without the heater which might be more relevant for your use case. This model also has a fan that can be used for cooling. Remember that this is not an air conditioner and it cannot cool the room down like an air conditioner does. Dyson also has a nighttime mode. In fact, that's the mode I'm running it on right now so that the noise is not too much when I'm actually speaking on the screen. But it also has something called a diffused mode. So if you don't want the air to be hitting the person who is actually sitting right around the air purifier, you can use a diffuse mode so it will just project the air in one particular direction. Dyson also has an extensive warranty of two years. It is fairly energy efficient as well. In the non-heating mode, it uses just about 40 watts, but in the heating mode, it can use up to 2.25 kilowatts. There are a few things you need to keep in mind before you actually decide to purchase an air purifier, including the Dyson. The first is that a lot of air purifiers will actually call out a statistic on the clean air delivery rate or the CADR. The higher the rate, the better. Dyson does not publish it because in general, the room sizes that the CADR is measured by a lot of the manufacturers is smaller. But Dyson publishes a separate statistic. So you can actually take a look at that on their website, which can show you the purification process and purification speed. The second thing is that this particular model, the Dyson Air Purifier HP04 Hot and Cool, actually also has a heater. So it does require a 16 amp plug point. So if you don't have access to that, you might need to purchase a different model which does not require a 16 amps plug point. And the third thing I want to reiterate that this only has a fan. It is not a replacement for an AC. So if you are looking to actually cool your room with this air purifier, it is not going to help with that. I hope this was useful in helping you determine how to purchase an air purifier. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.